John Calvin on Psalm 104, verses 29 through 32. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth, and it trembleth. He toucheth the hills, and they smoke. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. In these words, the psalmist declares that we stand or fall according to the will of God. We continue to live as long as he sustains us by his power. But no sooner does he withdraw his life-giving spirit than we die. Even Plato knew this, who so often teaches that, properly speaking, there is but one God, and that all things subsist or have their being only in him. Nor do I doubt that it was the will of God, by means of that heathen writer, to awaken all men to the knowledge that they derive their life from another source than from themselves. In the first place, the psalmist asserts that if God hides his face, they are afraid, and secondly, that if he take away their spirit, they die, and return to their dust. By which words he points out that when God vouchsafes to look upon us, that look gives us life, and that as long as his serene countenance shines, it inspires all the creatures with life. Our blindness, then, is doubly inexcusable if we do not, on our part, cast our eyes upon that goodness which gives life to the whole world. The prophet describes, step by step, the destruction of living creatures upon God's withdrawing from them his secret energy, that from the contrast he may the better commend that continued inspiration by which all things are maintained in life and vigor. He could have gone further and have asserted that all things unless upheld in being by God, would return to nothing. But he was content with affirming in general and popular language that whatever is not cherished by him falls into corruption. When we see the world daily decaying and daily renewed, the life-giving power of God is reflected to us herein as in a mirror. All the deaths which take place among living creatures are just so many examples of our nothingness, so to speak. And when others are produced and grow up in their place, we have in that presented to us a renewal of the world. Since then the world daily dies and is daily renewed in its various parts, the manifest conclusion is that it subsists only by a secret virtue derived from God.